Did you see that focus, that collaboration, that enthusiasm for learning in those elementary school scientists? That's what we get to see every season in Science Olympiad. My name is Emily Owens, and I'm the state director for Virginia Science Olympiad. And whether you're a potential coach, a parent, or a student scientist looking to learn more about our elementary level program, I'm going to give you a quick intro to what Science Olympiad is all about and hope that you join us for next season. To give you a little bit of background about what Science Olympiad is overall, Science Olympiad is one of the premier science tournament organizations in the United States. It's an international nonprofit organization completely dedicated to improving the quality of science education and enriching the science education experience of students in elementary, middle, and high school levels. It provides an exposure to many fields of science, many of which students haven't even seen in the classroom, but get to expand their engagement with realms of science like astronomy and forensics and so many others. We also focus on coordinating with schools and meeting national curriculum standards. So everything we do is meant to align and enrich with what you're doing in the classroom if you're a coach or what your students are doing in the classroom if you're a parent. It's important to note that Science Olympiad is not a science fair. So students aren't creating their own projects or doing long-term data collection to present for a project of their own development. It's not an emphasis on any one particular field of science. So it's not like biology Olympiad or chemistry Olympiad where they're focused on just one realm. We cover many realms of science, including biology and chemistry, but also things like earth science and a lot of engineering, physics too. So many different aspects of science all put into one competition. It's also not a competition for individuals. Science Olympiad is team-based, and that's one of the cool things that we love about Science Olympiad. As you saw in those little video clips, we have students always working together to do science. We have three divisions of Science Olympiad in Virginia. This video is going to focus on Division A, but I think it's important to know the difference between Divisions A, B, and C. Division A is for grades 3 through 5, whereas Division B is grades 5 through 8, and Division C is grades 9 through 12. If you look on the National Science Olympiad website, you're mainly going to be seeing things focused on Divisions B and C. These divisions which in Virginia is pretty much how we think of like our middle and high school divisions, though we do have some elementary schools compete, especially those that have grades five and six in them. They follow the national rule book that is used across the country for tournaments that have regional, state, and national level competitions. Division A, however, in Virginia, we write our own rules and run tournaments of our own design, often to mimic what's going to be happening in Division B as students uh, increase in grade and age. But we have different events and different rules than in Divisions B and C. And if you're familiar with our middle and high school programs, one of the key features is that we have engineering events where students are building and testing devices. And it's important to note that in Division A, there are no pre-built devices. Everything they do in their competition is done on site at tournament day. If you have a fifth grader or if you are a fifth grader, or if you're potentially a coach of a team that includes fifth graders, please know that they have to decide whether they want to compete on a Division A team or a Division B team. They can't do both in the same school year. So if your school offers both divisions, fifth graders have to pick one for that given season of competition. Division C has a maximum of seven 12th graders on a team, but I imagine if you're watching this video, you're focused more on those lower grades. But we hope that you'll stick with us and we'll see you in Division C. I mentioned before that Science Olympiad is a team event, and so I wanted to give a little bit more context as to what that means. Science Olympiad teams have a maximum of 15 students per team, covering 20 or more events depending on the division and the season. Schools can field up to three teams per season in a given division. So that means up to 45 students can compete in a Division A tournament for that school in a given year. 
But teams don't have to have 15 members. You could have a team of seven people. You could have a team of five people. You just can't go above 15. And those teams are going to be separate in competition from one another. The events that they do together in their teams cover a wide range of science and engineering topics meant to expose students to areas beyond that elementary school curriculum and get them excited about things they might be exploring in middle and high school or even as careers. These events do earn medals individually. So uh, students do receive medals by event with their partners that they work with. These events and rules change from year to year. So even students who join us for one year, it's not going to be exactly the same the next year. We change the events and we change the parameters so that every year is a new experience. Students also, like I said, work on events in pairs. Some select events have them working in groups of three or even more than that sometimes, when, like in events such as pentathlon. But the important thing is that they're collaborating with partners. So they're always working together with at least one other person so that they have someone to brainstorm with, to practice with, and to support them in those competition moments. They're not competing against their partner. If they win a medal in their event, they're winning with their partner for the effort they put in together. But they don't have to have the same partner for every event. Their partners can be different for different events. They just have to be from the same team. So this is an opportunity for students to work with many other students in their grade and school on different science experiences. And for every event at a tournament, each team gets one entry of students, so one pair of students or however many are allowed per event. If a school fields three teams, they get to send a pair of students from each team, but only one set of students from one team can compete. This means that among the group of students collaborating across all the events, they all get a variety of different experiences that at the higher levels combine together to create team scores for um, qualifying for state level and national level tournaments. If you do field more than one team and you send, for example, three sets of students, one from each team to an event, they are competing against each other. But that doesn't mean that they can't practice together and prepare together for a tournament. It's just on tournament day, they're not meant to all collaborate together as a group in the event. They can win medals separate from the other teams. So you have to divide students into teams before you make event assignments. And you can't have a student from one team partner up with a student from another team. And if that sounds like a lot to you to kind of figure out, don't worry. Our Division A coordinators spend a lot of time getting coaches ready for their season so that we can assist you in learning how to assign students to events and make sure that you're not making any mistakes or double booking a student before tournament day. Along with that, we also help you interpret the schedule. Some events happen at set times, so students are also limited by what's happening when, and they can't compete in two events set to happen in the same block. Just to give you a little bit of a preview of what happens in a Division A tournament, we have written test events like anatomy or data investigations where students are competing in events at a set time based on their team number. So if their team won, they might compete in anatomy during session one, but they don't compete in data investigations until session two. So that means that someone who's doing data investigations can't do fast facts because they happen at the same time. You'll also see that we have build events. Build events are really popular because they get to actually build the device on site at the tournament with their partner and then test it out to see how it works. These events are self-schedule events, meaning that they happen throughout the day and coaches schedule the teams in advance for when they're gonna compete in those. And again, don't worry, we help you learn how to schedule them in our system so that everyone has a set schedule ready to go before those tournaments happen. You'll notice also that there are some events on here that are labeled as third grade only. 
we understand that third graders are really different from fifth graders. So we have a variety of events always planned out ahead that are going to be for third grade participants only. But that doesn't mean that third graders can't participate in other events. They totally can. It's just that we save some events only for third grade. So you can see we have a lot of things going on on tournament day. They can take a test based on how they've prepared with their partner studying different topics. They can do events where they've practiced building something to meet a certain task and they get to do it on site in real time at the tournament with their partner and test it to see how it works that day. Again, we help you as coaches or as parents and competitors figure out the schedule and maximize your opportunities to be able to compete in the events that you want to do. But it's a team effort. So some students might get anatomy while others get extremophiles. And that's the team component, figuring it all out with your coach and school. To give you an overview of what a season of Science Olympiad looks like in Division A, in September, that's when we release our rules. And again, Vir Virginia writes their own rules. So if you look at elementary information on the National Science Olympiad website, it won't have the rules that we write and use. We also open our registration on our VASA website. And we start to offer initial coach support meetings about how to register, what it means to have a team. We've probably directed you to this video from those meetings too. And that's when we encourage schools to consider having a team interest meeting to see what students might be excited about the opportunity to compete in Science Olympiad. October, November, and December are when we encourage coaches to assign events to participants and start practicing all together, meeting their partners and reading through the rules to see what tasks they're going to be working on. And again, we continue to offer coach support meetings along the way. In January, at the early end is when our registration closes. And at the later end in January is when we assign our tournaments so that competitors and their families have enough time to know what day and time their teams will be competing. February and March is all about tournament preparation, getting team volunteers figured out, getting build event signups done. And we help you through all of that, again, with coach support meetings. And it all leads up to April when we have Division A tournaments with dozens of teams coming together, competing against each other, but doing science together all in the same space. If you're interested in starting a team, check out our website at virginiaso.org. We update annually with information unique to that season and have a lot of good information about initial startup for teams. You can also fill out an interest form so that we can put you on our mailing list so you can get direct contact from us about our timeline, and other information about coach support and interest meetings. And if your school already has a team, we can help connect you with those coaches so that you can know what's going on when. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our website and check out our social media and follow us. We post a lot of great content throughout the year and we're excited to have you join us on our Science Olympiad journey.